Hey everyone, uh, Ashley Trickett here. Thank you for joining me for my intermediate uh, paint class. I'm super excited um, to be doing this. Uh, those of you that don't know me, I've been teaching at BASIS for three years now, and uh, it's a great school. I love teaching art, especially love painting, so I was excited to do this class. Uh, before we begin, a couple things I want to go over. I just want to go over um, what's in your kit, so everything that you got in your kit, what you'll need, um, and then we'll jump into the painting part. So, uh, in your kit, you should have gotten a canvas. Um, mine I've taken and wrapped with uh, blue painter's tape. You don't have to do this. I like to do this because I have a tendency to get really messy when I paint, and uh, this just makes it so your sides don't get paint on them, and then when you're finished with your painting, you can peel it off, and it's nice and clean. Uh, so anyways, if you would like to do that, you have the option of doing that. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Um, over here, I have uh, the image that we're going to be painting. Keep in mind, this is just a reference. It doesn't have to look like the photo. It's just a reference. If you want to change the colors a little bit. If you want to modify it a little bit, then you are free to do so. Just to check the sound. Now I have my volume all the way up. Uh, all right, so you should also have a paper plate. Uh, these are painting palettes. I put two in there because I realized after I bought them that they're really small. So I'll probably be using both of these. A cup of water to clean your brushes, a uh, paper towel to clean your brushes as well. These are the um, paints you're going to be using. So if you notice, I only put the primaries, red, yellow, and blue. I also put white and black. And with that, we are going to mix all the colors um, by using these. So if you know color theory, awesome. If not, it's pretty easy. It's pretty basic. We'll go over that. That's part of the class. So uh, in addition to that, you should also have a palette knife, which um, if you've never worked with a palette knife, they're really fun. They're used to um, give you more of a thicker um, kind of textured look. So we're going to be using that on some of the painting. And then you'll also be using your brushes. This is a smaller brush for more detailed work. And then this is a a little bit bigger brush for more detail work as well. All right, so let's let's get painting the most exciting part. So first thing we're going to do is uh, they call it toning your canvas or basically you're just laying down the ground color. So with painting, you want to start with your biggest uh, biggest areas and uh, you work from basic to specific, right? So there's really no wrong or right way to approach a painting. However, uh, if you start going in and start doing all the details and, and your proportions are wrong, then um, it can get kind of stressful. So that's why you kind of work in steps and um, it's a lot less stressful if you do it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this way. Um, I'll probably be picking my canvas up so you can get a closer look at it. Uh, this is a little easel. Um, to most of you, I'd imagine, just be painting on a table at home or something like that, which is perfect. Uh, so, all right, so let's go ahead and start um, toning your canvas. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do this portion of the painting, um, which is the sky, and then this. Um, this is my left side. This would probably be your right side um, of your painting. So I'm going to just set this up here. So somewhere where you can kind of see it. Um, that's a good spot right there. Maybe. All right. So I'm going to be mixing blues and whites, and I'm just going to be uh, applying it up to this area and this area over here. And then after that, we'll do the sand. Um, we do need to leave a little bit of drying time, so once we do that, um, we'll let it dry, maybe give you a little bit of a break, and then we will finish the painting. 
So let's go ahead and get our blue out and our white. That's all we're going to be working with right now. Um, if you can see my painting that I did, oh, where did I put it? Over here. Um, I've got quite a, um, like I said, this is a little um, different. A little different than the um, image looks. I added some like pinks and purples, and I kind of did um, add my own little touch to it. So this detail stuff we'll do after we do the the big stuff. However, um, don't be worried about having it look exact. That's not the point of the class. The class is to have fun and learn some new techniques and just to paint. I love to paint. So it should be fun. All right, so um, with your palette knife, you're just going to start taking your colors like so. Um, my white is a little thick, so I'm going to go ahead and just add um, a couple of drops of water. And I'm going to mix it around. Uh, this blue is pretty potent, so depending on how um, blue you want your sky, you don't want to get too carried away with the blue. So you can see I've added, and maybe you can't see, it's kind of bright, uh, some white. I'm going to add a little bit of blue here. The cool thing about painting with a palette knife is uh, I like it. I actually prefer for it. Okay, let me try that again. I prefer it to look um, not mixed because it has kind of a cool effect. So that's what's fun about a palette knife. So I'm going to get my blue and my white, and I'm going to start to kind of blend it out like so. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick up it up off my knife. And I'm just going to start painting in my sky. So if you if you look at the image, you can see um, the sky is not quite one third of the way up, but it's definitely higher than half the way up. So we don't need to be super technical about having it be perfect. However, you want it to be, and you want your proportions to be somewhat um, accurate, right? So. Starting to get some of that onto my canvas. Um, you can see it's kind of, some of it's not super blended, some of it is. Um, I'm going to take this brush here just for the sake of time. If we get two, I'm going to add just a little bit of water to my brush. I'm going to start kind of blending this sky out a little bit, right? Um, it's okay if some of the areas are a little thicker. Um, if you get it on too thick, the only problem is it takes too long to dry. The nice thing about acrylic paint is that um, it dries pretty quick. And the other nice thing about it is if you don't like something, the beauty of it is you can just paint over top of it, right? Um, oil color is a little, you can also add a little bit of water, which I'm doing. This creates more of a wash. I'm going to add one more paint down here because I don't have quite enough. So at this point in time, once you get your paint laid down, you can go back in and kind of fill in your sky. I'm liking that. Uh, I might add if I look at my image, you can see I have some more kind of white areas in the clouds. So another thing you can do is you can take your brush and just go like this. So see how I'm adding um, kind of patches. And then I'm going to take my palette knife like so and kind of soften it up. And that kind of creates almost like a cloud cloud look in the sky. All right, one thing 
you can do is you can start to overwork it. So I feel like at this point in time, I might be overworking it a little bit. So I'm going to move on. If I have most of my sky painted in. Uh, I'm going to bring this down just a little bit farther. We're going to paint over top of this anyway, so that doesn't really matter. So we have that. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add just this kind of little sliver of water right here. Um, so I'm going to go in with my, since I have paint here, if you need to get more, that's fine. And if you notice uh, the picture here, the water's a little deeper, it's a little more blue. So you can even just pick it up directly, you don't have to mix it. And we're going to create this kind of, um, not line, but um, sort of a water line there. Start dragging it down, a little more paint. You do use a lot more paint when it comes to palette knife painting. Oh, see how cool that is. It's just fun, fun, fun. Um, and then you can take it and kind of follow the direction of the waves. First thing there, you can drag it. That's what's fun about the palette knife is you can get all these cool textures um, by dragging your palette knife along your canvas. Okay. And I want to do just a little more detail the waves. So I am kind of dipping into my paint. Um, it's better if you can get your paint on here so you're not getting any. Whoops, see, I just got blue on my face. True, true artist. So, okay, I'm going to add just some more details here in the water because it sort of wiped out some of those details. Another thing you can do is take the uh, very edge or tip of your palette knife and kind of drag it. I'm liking that, but I'm also feeling like it might need to be blended a little bit, so I'm going to pick up my, my brush, which is right here, and I'm going to blend out just a few of these lines. Here comes all the way to the edge. And like I said, you got to be careful. My One of my biggest problems is I overwork things that get kind of off in my own world and then I'm like, oh no, I got carried away. So that's probably good. I'm not going to do too much more because I, I uh, we can always paint over top of it and then you also need to let this layer dry a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to, before I do the sand, so that's what I have so far. And um, before I do the sand, I need to make sure that my brush is clean. So uh, if you have, I would probably recommend using soap and water, um, but you can just kind of swish it around and clean it off with your fingers. That works pretty good too. And then we want to make sure that our, get some of that off, um, palette knife is clean too, because we're going to be using that again. So wipes off pretty well. That worked pretty good. Got most of the color off there. And I'm going to flip this over. Okay. One way you can test to see if your brush is clean is just put it in water and then go over top of paper towel. That looks good to me. All right, let's do the sand. So sand um, is also pretty light. Um, and the, all these darker values that we see here, we're going to be adding those in at the very end. We don't need to worry about all those details, right? We'll do those details after we get all the um, big areas put in first. So. Sand, we're going to mix, um, you can use your paper plate again, 
just use this area. Um, after this, most of what we're going to be doing is a little more detail oriented, so um, you should have plenty of room on your little plastic palettes I put in your kit. Okay, so I'm mixing this up a little bit, and then I'm just going to kind of spoon it onto my plate. All right. So to get that sand color, we don't need to add a whole lot of uh, color. And brown is sort of a tricky color to get. Um, and I'll we'll talk about color mixing in just a little bit. But basically to get brown, you want to add um, all the primaries, so red, yellow, and blue. However you want to use less. Um, blue's pretty potent, and so is red. So mostly, mostly yellow. I'm just going to dip a little bit of yellow, and I'm going to just kind of mix in here. A little bit of yellow. So remember, yellow and, yellow and um, red give you orange. Sand's kind of orange color, but it's also a little more cool, so that's why you want to add just a touch of blue. So I'm going to add just a little bit of red. And like I said, that's pretty potent. I probably mix a little much, but that's okay. That's uh, the reason why I, I decided to give you just the primaries is because this is a really, really good exercise. Size. And I'm going to add just a little bit of blue. That's going to cool it down, right? Um, really good exercise. So when I say a little bit, I mean that too much. Just a little dab in there. So this is going to cool it down. And right now it's looking a little bit um, purple which is fine, because if you know color theory, you know that that's a purple or violet is yellow. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow back in. And see if we can make this look more like sand. A little more yellow. It's looking better. And then I think we need to add just a little bit of white. That's looking better. So if you can see this, the light, lighting maybe just a little um A little bright in here, but this is looking pretty close to a sand color. I feel good about it. It might have a little bit of a pinkish sheen to it, but that's that's better. I'd rather have a warm tone as opposed to like a uh, green sand or something like that. Okay, so I just put it on my canvas. Let's see if I move my camera in closer. There we go. If I tilt it that way, you can see it a little bit better. So I feel good about that. I'm actually just going to take my um, palette knife and start putting it on. No need to be too particular. The other thing I'm going to do is, if you can see my brush, or excuse me, my um palette knife. I'm going to take it and kind of tap it and that gives it like a um, textured look sort of which is really cool looking. Um, and at this point in time because I don't want to take forever um, my hope was to get this class I think we can get this painting done in an hour. Um, also really quick I'm going to actually clean out my water because it's getting kind of muddy and once it gets muddy 
then it's really hard to see what you're doing. There we go. So my water's, it's a little cloudy, but it doesn't, it's much better than it was before. So. I'm just going to continue to lay this sand color down and then I'm going to start uh, moving it around with my smaller brush so I can color, cover the whole thing. Typically when you're painting, um, kind of a good rule of thumb is you start with your medium values first, right? So you can see in this sand, this value I have right here is like, um, it's easier to see if I turn it this way. It's kind of medium, right? Um, you can see there's some dark shadows. You also have some lighter tones. Um, but if you get your medium values in there, it's going to be easier to paint your... to see where you want to put your highlights and also your um, shadows. So if you need to add a little bit of A little bit of um, water to your paint you can to get it to kind of move. Also I'm kind of dragging this into this uh, water area, kind of softening that line up. All right I'm feeling pretty good about my sand. I do think it needs maybe a little more of like a white, um, some white in there. So I'm going to just take a little bit here. We don't need a whole lot of the white um, for the rest of the painting. And I'm just going to kind of pick out areas where I want it to be a little lighter. Drop it down. And then like I said, the technique I'm using for this um, is just kind of tapping it and it gives it a if I take my camera, it looks textured. It kind of looks like stucco. That's what it reminds me of, the like stucco you see on the side of your house. I'm also going to take it this way because that's kind of the direction of the sand. And the cool thing about the cool thing about palette knife painting is when you um, are finished with it, it actually has a a textured, a raised look, right? So if you go over it with your fingertip. Um, it's not smooth, it's kind of bumpy. Um, and I, I really like that. Some people like more of a controlled type look. I like kind of the abstract, um, loose type stuff. Okay. Bring that up. All right. And some some spots I got maybe a little bit. Um, now I'm going in with my brush and I'm going to kind of tap in some areas where I want it um, just a little bit darker or thicker with my paint. Okay, awesome. So now we have like majority of our painting done which is nice because I think sometimes the most daunting thing about starting a painting is at least for me um, how do I start a painting right how do I start it um, what do I do first so like I said there's not really a right or wrong way to do a painting but there's little tips that will make it easier all right let's move on to um, I am gonna let this dry um, I like, to let this, I like to leave this for about five minutes, maybe even 10 minutes. Um, so, so that when you paint over top of it, it doesn't, um, it'll just be easier to work with if we let it dry a little bit. If there's any areas you want to touch up really quick, now's the time. You might want to blend this out just a little bit in a couple areas, some of these thick spots. 
but don't overwork it. It's, that's my biggest problem. Sometimes you get some really cool things going on with the paint, uh, especially when it's not blended, and then if you blend it out, it looks a little too controlled. All right, I, I'm liking the way it looks, so I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to set this off to the side. All right, so let's spend about, um, let's spend about maybe not quite 10 minutes, but maybe about seven minutes kind of quickly going over color theory. All right, so I'm going to write this out so that you can let's see if this is better if I'm moving a little closer. Okay, so that you can um, copy this down. The nice thing about having a recording is if you want to stop and take notes and go back, you can do that. So um, let's just go over the basics. If you know these already, then I apologize. But if not, this, some of this, um, some of you, this might be new to you. And this is just really great information um, if you want to become a better artist or get better at painting. So, okay. So you have your primary colors, which are, I'm sure most of you know the song, um, one, two, three, red, yellow, and blue. So you have red, yellow, and blue are the primaries. Pretty basic, right? You have red, yellow, blue primaries. Uh, then the next thing is your secondary. So to get your secondary, you're going to mix, intermix the primaries. So you have red and yellow, make orange. You have yellow and blue. Make green. Also, I think this, I'm not sure if this is backwards or not. I think that it is. So you can just copy what I'm saying. I am going to write it down because it helps me. If I'm trying to remember something, I have to write it down. So, and then you have blue and uh, red, which make violet or purple. You can ca call it either one, but if you're um, trying to be sophisticated or usually in the art world, they call it violet. Okay, so once you have these, um, probably I would say the most important thing with color theory is uh, once you know how to mix all of your secondary colors, so these are all your secondary, You can make just about anything. However, you need to understand um, complementary colors. So if you look at the color wheel, um, whatever is sitting across from that color is going to neutralize it. Um, so neutralize it means it's going to um, cool it down, wipe it out, um, make it less intense. Um, so I always remember yellow and violet, the like Easter colors, right? Or spring colors. Those are complementary colors. So if something's too yellow, you're going to add violet to it. If it's too violet, you're going to add yellow to it. So that's how that works. And then you have orange and blue. And I always think of the um, Chicago Bears football team, even though I don't really like him. I just Remember that, so you have the Chicago Bears. Easter or spring is for yellow and violet. And then we have red and green, which is easy peasy. Christmas, right? Everybody knows those colors, so Christmas colors. And then to make brown or black, you basically mix all these together, right? So you're going to mix uh, yellow, red, yellow, and blue all together. Um, to get black, though, you need to use more of the blue and more of the red, right? Because it's a darker yellow, a lighter color. Um, 
So yeah, and then some other tone, um, some other terms that you might want to know is, um, if you're creating a tint, uh, basically a tint is you uh, adding white to any color that's pure or saturated. If you're creating a shade, just think of when you shade something, you make it darker, you're adding black to it, right? So that's going to make it less intense. And then if you're toning something, um, that's a uh, term you hear a lot. Um, those of you ladies out there, if you ever had to get your hair toned, um, it's neutralizing those warm tones. So usually it's like a gray or something cool that's going to neutralize those yellow gold tones that you have in your hair. Um, so yeah, this stuff is handy, not only in painting, but everyday, everyday use. Um, so I think that's all the time I'm going to spend on the color theory because I'd like to get our painting finished up. Um, let's move back to that. So if you look at my painting, so far it's, most of it's dry. You can tell by touching it, um, except for the thicker areas, but we're still gonna move on. Just be careful to not um, dip your elbow on it or something like that. Um, I'm gonna have to be a little more careful because I'm left-handed, so I don't wanna get my hand in there. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next step. So the next step is if we look at this painting, we wanna paint, um, it's always easier if you paint, um, for me at least, if I paint um, from the top down, right? That way your hand's not getting in the way. And then you also want to paint whatever object is behind. And then, so for example, I'm going to paint this mountain first, right? This mountain area because it's behind the palm trees. I wouldn't want to paint the trees or the boat because I'm going to have to paint behind it and that's a pain, right? So just there's also remember you want to paint um, from general to specific so your basic shapes first and then you do your smaller shapes so let's uh, clean your brush and for this part um, if you still have your uh, paper plate and you have room to mix on it you can use that but I'm going to move on to these um, and these are nice because you can clean them and wipe them up and use them again but I'm going to move on to using these because I, I, I used all my paper plate. I got carried away. Okay. So from here on out, we're going to be using mostly, um, mostly brushes, right? I might have used your um, palette knife to do kind of some detail work, but for the most part, it's going to be hard to get all these little details with your palette knife. It, it can be done, but it takes a lot of practice and a lot of patience. And uh, we just want to get this painting done, right? So, all right, let's let's put in the mountain area. So this is going to be a little harder to mix. Um, I'm going to the camera a little closer, but you can see um, if you look at this, it's it's mostly gray, right, in the background. But you do have some some highlights in there still. So I'm going to mix up, um, because we have black in your kit, um, I'm going to let you use black. Uh, a lot of times I, I don't let my students do that, but it's like I said, it's really hard to get it that dark when you're mixing all of your primaries. So I'm going to just get the, some blue. Keep in mind, all we're doing right now is we're mixing. Um, I might mix up just a little bit more because I'm going to use some of this brown for the trees too. So pretty much I'm mixing blue. If you want to take your other, I'm going to take this brush and the smaller brush and just mix a little bit of red in. All right, so this is going to make more of a violet color, which we don't really want purple. But I, I'm liking um, how dark it is, right? Um, we might want to warm it up. Actually, we might want to add just a little bit of yellow because keep in mind the opposite of violet is yellow, right? So that's going to kind of neutralize it and make it more neutral, which is what we want. The background's kind of gray. 
and as you're mixing this, you can see it's kind of, it's actually kind of turning greenish, which is, it's, I just think it's really fun to mix color. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now, if I wanted to warm this up, right, because it's kind of greenish, so I'll make it more of a brown. I am going to add some more red to it because I'm liking it, but it's still looking a little, it's looking a little too cool for me. And now it's too purple. So at this point in time, because it's so dark, uh, I can, I know that I, I'm going to need to add um, some white to it, right? So that's going to make it less intense. Maybe just a touch more yellow. I'm liking the way that's looking. Um, it's looking more like a brown. Just make sure before you're dipping into your other colors that you're um, wiping your, cleaning your brush. If you get a little bit of paint in there, like for example, you can see I have a little bit of red in there. That's fine because um, it's not enough. If you start to mix it in, it's gonna, it's not gonna really gonna affect the um, intensity of that color. If you got a, a, like a big, huge glob of it, you might want to take it out of there. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about that. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but that's the color I'm going to use for my mountain. And for that, I'm going to, I'm just going to paint, um, I'm actually going to pick up this brush, my bigger one. And it still has some blue in there, which is okay. I'm going to mix it in. Keep in mind too, these don't have to be totally realistic, right? Just because you're painting a landscape, if you wanted your back of your mountain to be blue, you can have a blue mountain. That's why art's so awesome. All right. I'm going to modify it just a little bit because when I picked up my blue brush, I got a little more, it went a little more blue than I had anticipated. Okay, so now I'm just going to start painting um, this part of my mountain right so you can see it kind of comes up like this and then it kind of dips down goes up again and it kind of comes down into the water like that um I'm going to add just a little bit of um, water to this so I can kind of move it around a little bit on my canvas. You don't have to have it thick in all areas, just where you want it to kind of stand out or look. Um, so I'm going to kind of carry it down to here. And it even looks kind of cool. I like to have um, how I did it as a more of like a wash. You can kind of see that blue um, popping through, which I think is really pretty. I'm actually going to leave that. I'm going to clean that off. Um, and I'm going to pick up, I'm just going to have a little bit of white. So at this point in time, you could use your palette knife or you could use your brush. Either one would be fine. I'm going to use my palette knife because I think it's fun, so I'm just going to kind of dip um, the edge of my palette knife and where I want to see those highlights, I'm going to just kind of take it like that and drag it down. And if you look, um, one thing you can always do is 
It helps me. I have a camera, so I'm recording, so I can kind of look at it and see. Um, but if you're at home painting and you're not so sure how something looks, take a picture of it, like with your cell phone or something, and you can see things that your eye um, doesn't always see. You, you see it different in a photograph. So now I'm basically just going in and blending out some of these um, areas. I don't want to overwork because, um, like I said, that's what's cool about palette knife painting is it um, doesn't look perfect. It kind of has a um, abstract appeal to it. All right, I'm liking that. Only thing I can see is maybe um, some of these highlights. A little bright right there. Just gonna wipe those out. And maybe right there. Okay. So now I have my mountain. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the trees, the trunk of the trees, um, where I want them to be. And then I'm gonna paint in the tops. And then the last part is the boat and then the details, which um, this is good. I think we should be able to fit, finish this in an hour, which is pretty good. Um, I think I scheduled an hour and a half, but I don't think we'll need it. However, if you if you are um, needing more time, you can always stop the recording and go back, which is awesome. I have a tendency to work really fast, so if you're feeling overwhelmed that's totally fine you can go back and um paint whatever you would like a little bit later okay let's go ahead and paint in the trees so before we start if i look at this if i look at where my um trees rest you can see this one here in the middle is about halfway down right so i'm going to do that one a bit lower and this one's um Maybe one, maybe three-fourths the way down or something like that. It doesn't have to be exact, but you also want to make sure you're kind of getting your proportions in your mind the way you want them. Because if you go in and um, sometimes it's hard to fix it, right? Okay, so for the brown, the only thing I did is I added a little bit of red because... I want to warm up these tree chunks a little bit. And I'm also going to add white to my mixture. And I'm not, I'm not super digging that color. It looks a little too, a little too gray for me, right? So we're going to need to add a little more red and a little more yellow is kind of orange like an orange right color mixing is not easy but it's it will make you a better artist like I said if you can um, kind of understand some of the rules and then add just a little more yellow yeah that's better I like that better okay I'm not going to take too much more time because I want to get the tree trunks in. So I'm going to do the first tree. B. I guess that about halfway down. Also, it's one, two, two. It's about right there. And it kind of curves down like so. And so I'm just going to add a little more paint here. Also, my, my canvas is still, the sand part is still wet down here, which is kind of nice because it's like um, creating a nice blend, right? And a nice shadow. So you can see this part, my light source is coming from here, right? Because you can see it's lighter here. Um, so you will want to kind of follow that in the painting. You know, it doesn't have to be exact, like I said. Um, 
But the light source is what makes it look realistic, right? Because pretty much everything has some sort of light source. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I can always come back to it. I don't want to overwork it. Um, I'm also going to... Uh, no, I'm just going to do the trunks for now. And then we can go in and do the trees, uh, the palm trees. Okay, so this one kind of curves down. So look at the direction it's going um, down to the right. And then this, this tree trunk is going to go just a little bit further down. Also, I can see that that's, that might be a little low. So I'm just going to blend that out with my finger. Okay, so this one kind of comes down like that. And off to the right. And it's going to be darker on this side. I'm just going to pick up my white paint. Okay. Whoops. Did you see what happened there? I accidentally picked up some blue, which is not the end of the world. Um, you can either... Because my paint's still pretty wet, one thing you can do is just go like this and wipe it off. Maybe. Yeah. Wipe it off. Sometimes it did, not all of it comes off, but that's okay. I kind of like that it added a little bit of a, like a blue tone over the... I'm not going to worry about it too much. You can add a little bit of water to kind of move it around. I kind of like it, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, back to the trees. And usually when I paint, I have music on, but because I'm teaching, I like it quiet, but I do think it's um, more relaxing to paint with music. Yeah, I really kind of like that little bit of blue. Like I said, sometimes you make a mistake with painting and then you're like, oh, you want to duplicate it because it looks kind of cool. All right, so this bottom part, I'm just going to kind of take a little bit of water and soften that line, All right? So I don't have such a hard line there. And then let's do the last tree chunk. And this tree chunk is still not quite halfway over. It's pretty far. Let's see, it's going to be about right here. And it kind of goes down to the left. Also, when you're painting like this, I use this kind of the side of my brush. Um, you can do this way, but sometimes it might be a little thicker than you wanted. Um, and this comes down actually quite far. But it's going to be covered up. Most of it's going to be covered up by the boat. But we still want to bring that chunk down so we can see it down there. I'm just going to add a little bit of white to it, um, just kind of in some of these highlight areas. So take the corner of my brush where you have those highlights. And I think that's good. Maybe blend them out a little bit. And then the next thing we're going to do is the uh, palm tree. The green of the palm tree, or the top of the palm tree, and then um, paint in the boat. So we're, we're doing good. Oh, we also need to do the shadow right here. Or you can leave, it's kind of up to you. All right, so we have not worked with green yet. Um, and the good news is we have kind of this dark color already to add into our highlight, or I mean, excuse me, my um, shadows. But for now, so I've already used this spot, so I'm just going to flip it over to 
to mix my green. And remember, we're just using yellow and blue. And so you want to make sure you're cleaning off your brush. And that is a pretty bright green, which I'm digging that. So like I said, with color, you want to do your, um, you want to do your kind of mid color, mid tone colors first. So this is like kind of a mid, mid green, right? And then you have sort of these highlights here and then you have the darker. So I'm going to just go in with my, this color right here, because I like it. I'm going to start over here on the right. I'm going to start putting in these leaves here. So the first thing I do is I just kind of tap it in to get um, the shape I'm looking for. Right, and then all the details we're going to do after. And then you can see it kind of comes down. This leaf, this leaf, these leaves actually come over and cover this part of the palm tree. So I kind of like to do the tapping thing. Um, and then we'll kind of pull some of these down in a minute to get those values. But right now we're just kind of laying in, laying in the basic color. So I should have enough, have enough green mixed here to do this part up here. Tap those in right there. And I'm going to just use whatever green I have left here. Even though this tree over here doesn't have a lot of green, I maybe want to add a little bit, and I'm going to add a little bit of the leaf. So if you want to modify this, you can. It's your, it's your world. I just live in it. Right? It's your painting. I think Bob Ross said that. I love Bob Ross. So as you can see, it's not look, looking exact, but that's fine. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to go in with my palette knife because I want to. Make some of these. Um, I want to make it look thicker. So we've got the medium values we can do. Um, the dark, I'm actually going to do the darker value and then the highlights. Or maybe, eh, I'm going to do the lighter value and then the, the highlights and then the shadows. It doesn't really matter how you do it. So for this, I'm going to take, I'm just going to go into my yellow, straight into my yellow. And start having it in there. And I'm going to kind of, I'm going to blend this out in a minute with my, Either my palette knife or my brush. But right now I'm just trying to get kind of the pigment and the paint in there. And maybe a little bit up here, a little bit there. So basically all I'm doing here is I'm laying down color or value. You don't see a whole lot of white in there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe my brush off, and then just a little bit of white, kind of in with this yellow, and then you see some white kind of here coming out, and right here. So for the most part, if you squint your eyes and look at it, uh, these palm trees are pretty dark, right? Especially up there. So we don't need to get too carried away. Okay, so right now they look sort of just like blobs, which is fine. Um, now I'm going to add the dark, so click clean off your brush. And the best way to do this is you're going to squint your eyes and kind of 
pick out areas so you see some dark there, there, there. Okay, so I see some dark in there. See some dark under here. Down here. So I'm just dipping directly into my black. Um, but I'm not doing it super duper thick. And then I see some black up here. Here. Under there. And then just a little bit there and there. All right, that's all I'm going to do. So from there, um, to get a little bit of texture, I'm going to take my palette knife. If I can find it. Where did you go, palette knife? Hmm. I'm also going to get a different, um, a different paper towel because it's getting really, really yucky. I cannot find my towel knife. Oh, I dropped it. Okay. Here it is. And maybe if I just flip this over. Yep. Okay, we're good. I just flipped it over. So you don't have to keep using paper towels. All right, so from there, I'm just going to take my palette knife and I'm going to kind of drag. See how I did that? So I'm taking my palette knife and I'm dragging this down. And it's creating a, um, like a leaf look, which is really cool. And it's creating a texture in there. I'm pulling that down. So it's looking pretty cool. Um, the one thing I would suggest is you can do more detail, but I'd probably wait for it to dry. Because if you get, um, start doing too much, you're going to ruin it. And then we have this over here. Kind of that. So that's, that's all I'm going to do for the tops of my trees. And all the detail work I'm going to do later. I'm going to come back to that because I want to get the boat in. And then um, that's about it. Okay, so the boat, you're going to do this with your brush. So you want to clean off your brush. And I've kind of, kind of used that. I like to I like to have big areas, so I'm gonna use my other side, and I'm gonna use my because I need my blue. All right, so the um, the bow has a lot going on, right? You've got blue, yellow, red, green. You've got all these colors going on, but I would say for the most part, it's mostly blue. So I'm going to paint that in first, and then I'm going to paint the yellow, and then the red, and then the black. There's really, like I said, there's really no right or wrong way to do that. Do that, or, or approach it. You could do it however you wanted. That's just the way I'm going to do it. And if you look at my hands, they're covered in paint, which is um, how, it, how it should be. If you want to stop and wash your hands, you can. But the nice thing about acrylic paint is it dries pretty quick. And it also, um, I think I'm painting my face too. It also washes up really well. So let's move on to the boat. All right, so if you look at the boat, um, you can see there's a little bit of space down there. But for the most part, it covers 
Um, a big area of the right-hand side of our painting. So one thing you can do with paint is you can um, kind of like, I don't want to say draw with paint, but sort of like you can get your, your outline in there with paint. And that way you don't have to, um, if you're really particular about your proportions and drawing and stuff, um, you can use pencil on canvas, but paint's fine. You can go right over top of it. Okay, so I know that this part of the boat cuts through the tree, so I'm going to kind of paint that area in first. And it angles like that, right? So I'm looking at this part of the boat, and then it comes in like that. And then we have this blue spot here which is turning out nice, right? Because I'm just kind of going painting with the blue, but I'm also covering that area that's blue. And I'm also, um, I'm diluting this with water. So it's uh, kind of giving you a, a um, little bit of value without having to do anything. All right, I feel pretty good about that. This part I'm, in the middle, I'm going to leave because we're going to cover that with yellow and red. And then this is going to come down to about there. And this isn't exact. If you look at mine, um, maybe there's a little more space at the bottom, but it doesn't have to be exact. All right, so for this part, because it's thicker and darker, I'm just going to dip directly into my paint like so. And that's probably good for the bottom part. It's not perfect, but we're going to clean it up later. That's one of the biggest things I think with um, painting is you have to not be a perfectionist. I mean, you can, uh, it's, it's a process, right? It's steps. So if it's not quite right, just know you can always paint over it or you're going to be coming back to it. All right, so we have the um, blues in there. I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, just make sure your brush is clean. I'm going to go directly into my yellow and I'm just going to paint it here, right here. If it overlaps, that's okay because I kind of like seeing those different values in there. So I'm getting my yellow in there. And while I'm at it, since I have a little bit of yellow on my brush, I'm not going to use a ton, but you can see I have these kind of different um, highlights down there, some kind of some greens and stuff. I'm going to start to move those down there. So as far as making these lines like perfect, that's something you want to do towards the end. So don't get too caught up on um, making it look perfect or how I just added too much yellow and now it's green. That's something you could do once it's dry, fix that once it's dry. All right, and let's do the red stripe and then we'll add, um, because I want to keep this, I don't really want this video to go an hour and a half. It's a long time. I'm going to try and wrap it up in 10 minutes. Um, one, Real quick, I'm going to clean my water, though. This is, this is bad news. Bad news bears. So I'm going to clean this up. Right. 
got some fresh water and I also got some uh, paper towels. I'm back in business. All right, so let's add the red stripe and we'll start adding some of the details. And then um, this painting might not be 100% finished, um, but most of it. And then you can kind of add the, add the details. I'll show you how to do that too. Okay, so we need to add this. Uh, this I would do with a the red stripe because it's pretty thin. I would do it with your smaller brush and dip into your paint. And Right in there. And then some of this kind of comes down there. not a perfect line but like I said the nice thing about acrylic paint is I can let it dry and go over top of it and kind of fine-tune all that stuff so I, I can kind of straighten it out if I just add a little bit of water to my brush, I can kind of, kind of just blurs that line out. Um, and you can add a little bit of blue there over top of it. However, keep in mind if it's not dry, it's going to change it. So it's not quite dry, so you can see it kind of trying to change that blue to more of a violet which is fine. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little, um, some of the details now. So this kind of uh, window or whatever you see there, and then this little seat, and then some of the stuff on the bottom. And then the last step is I'm gonna show you how to do some of the shadows using a wash. And then that's it, we're done. If you wanna go ahead and add some bright colors, you can, or modify it a little bit, that's fine too. Okay, so I'm gonna take my black, And I'm going to do this little window. And sometimes you get these weird, got this weird hair. It's, it's um, coming off my brush and it's Screwing me up, so I, I got that hair off. Okay. All right, so it's not perfect, but like I said, I am not going to overdo it. Maybe it's just a little bit, a little bit, well, um, what's the word? wider than that. Okay, and now I have kind of these little, I don't know what we could call these um, spots up here. Okay, and then I have this little seat here that comes across. And I'd probably need to add maybe a little bit of a highlight to that because it's not quite that dark. It's actually kind of the shadow you're seeing and then you have, um, down here you have some of these dark values. So I'm just going to kind of dab that in to the bottom of the boat. So you see some of these darker values here. And then you see um, these shadows, right? So you see these shadows coming out from the boat and then the um, trees. 
So to do the shadows, you don't want to do just straight paint. You want to add a little bit of water to it. It's called like a wash. Also, I'm going to take my brush um, and kind of blend some of this out. So if your lines are too harsh, if you're not liking the way it looks, you can add a wash to it. Also, I'm going to add a little bit of white to this part, the chair. Little seat that looks better. Okay, I'm just looking at the time. I maybe like to be done in about five minutes. If you go a little bit over, that's fine. Okay, so you can see um, this part, I'm kind of blending out just a little bit here. I'm also going to take, um, so this is what I mean by wash. I have some of this black, and all I'm doing is adding white, excuse me, water to this black that I put on my, down here, and I'm just kind of dragging it down, right? And you can see how that's creating kind of a shadow on the bottom, but it's not super, super dark. Okay. All right. Um, so to do the shadows, I'm going to, like I said, what I would do is I wouldn't do like a solid line because that's going to be hard to blend out. So I would just take, um, like this one comes out. So I've added water to this. So it's, whoops. It's starting to move. And then I have this shadow here. So you want to kind of plan it out. Uh, there we go. Because even though shadows are dark, they typically always um, have a little bit of, uh, what's the word, um, change in value. So, you know, They'll be darker in one area, but then they kind of lighten up in certain areas too. So I'm just kind of dragging the shadow out. And I probably will want to use, for this part, I probably want to use um, a bigger brush. So I'm also kind of dragging this into the sand. Um, that's going to give it kind of a three-dimensional look. And then if you get get it to where it's like too dark or something, you can wipe it off. It's looking a little dark to me. You can blot it with a towel, paper towel, or you can wipe it off. Okay, so now, now we have our shadows. I'm gonna do the same thing up here with the palm trees. So we have this shadow kind of coming out here. Some shadows coming out here. Maybe a little bit there. Um, I need to do the rope too, but I'm going to wait to do that because I don't want to get, I want to get these shadows done first. So you can see I just kind of lay down the black, kind of space it out, and then I move it around with water. And if, if you're feeling like it's too dark, you can either blot it, or you can move it with your with your paper towel or add water to it. All right, it's it's looking like it's going to go closer to maybe not an hour and a half, but an hour and twenty minutes, which is fine. I I'm not trying to cheat you guys on time one bit. I just know it's hard. Um, to sit still for that long. So I'm kind of, I think that's probably good for the shadows. I don't think we need to get um, super carried away. Those. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, before I forget, I'm going to do this little rope comes off of the bolt here. 
I am not going to use that brush though. My smaller brush. So the rope kind of comes down like so. Like that. And um, the other thing I need to do, two more things I'm going to do, and then I'm going to um, wrap it up. I'm going to do some of the screen that you see. Uh, I don't know if you can see my in my reference photo, but there's a green, kind of some green in the um, sand. And then I'm also going to add in this shadow that's kind of by the water. I mean, that's it. If you want to do um, change your sky or add some more detail to your trees, I'll let you do that. Okay, so let's do the green part. So for the green, I need to mix up a little more. And I'm going to kind of just dab it in. Like I said, the cool thing about the, um, this is all dry now, but you have kind of textures because we used um, the palette knife. So, and if you look at these greens on the image, they're, um, they're more of like a yellow green, right? So, um, probably too much blue. So I have my mixture here. It's not totally blended, but I don't really want it to be totally blended. So I'm just going to start dabbing where I want this value, where you see it, which is kind of back here. It doesn't have to match exact. It doesn't have to be like painting. That will make you crazy if you try to make it perfect. It's just make it your own, make it how you want it, and that way you like it. So you can see I'm doing this quite quickly. Um, and the good thing is I can do the same thing that I did with the shadows. I'm going to add a little bit of water. I don't have such harsh lines. And I'm just going to start kind of blending it out. We'll see how that's softening up those values. And maybe I might kind of pull that green up just a little bit higher. So you see up here, like I said, it's it's your painting too. I mean, reference photos good to help, mostly for proportions and stuff like that. But um, have fun with it. Painting is not supposed to be scary or like too serious. Okay, so I'm liking that, um, but I think I got carried away with the green down here. So because it's still wet, I can pull some of this out or dab it out. And I'm going to kind of pull some of this out too. And maybe just a little bit up here in some of these areas. See how it looks more subtle now, which I like. And I actually, um, I like seeing kind of this yellow in the, um, like this blue green in the ocean. It's not really part of the picture, but I like it. So I'm going to kind of add some of this into the water. Because a lot of times you see uh, green in the ocean, which I think is really pretty. So. I'm just going to kind of go, and because this is dry, I can go, well, almost dry. Some of it's not quite dry. I can go over top of these waves. All right, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add kind of this dark um, value for the sand. Maybe not quite that dark. And then I might add just a little bit of pink to the sky or something like that. Um, so I have, I still have some of this brown mixed up. I'm going to use the same brush that I used to do my greenery on the bottom. And I'm not going to do like, what's the word I'm trying to say? I'm not going to do the whole shape. I'm just going to kind of dab some of this in so that it looks like 
sand. So I'm using the edge of my brush. And I'm kind of coming down here. So I'm just dabbing in this darker value. I'm gonna take my brush. Just kind of soften it up. Start pulling some of it into the water. I think the sand in the reference photo is a lot more, uh, what's the word? Um, more of a warmer color, it's kind of gray. Just fine, and the water's kind of running. See how it's sort of running down my canvas, that's fine too, because I'm going to dab it. I just wanted to kind of add this to create um, that shoreline. So, and I'm liking that. I don't want to mess with it too much. So what I'm going to do for that. And the last thing I'm going to do is, um, if you look at my picture when I showed you the first one it had kind of some pinks and purples oh it's right here um, so these are just like little details you would add um, at the very end and mine's super super thick if you look at the uh, paint I did it really heavy on that one so just for fun let's see if, if we can get a pretty pink if not I'm not going to put it on there um, but sometimes it looks kind of pretty to do a little bit of pink in the sand. Um, so this is where you get to have fun. I have a little bit of this sand color, so I'm going to take that. And I'm actually just going to add a little bit of red to it because I already have that mixed up. And that color is kaka. It needs more. It needs just white. That's looking prettier. Even more right, so I'm going to clean it off again. Okay, I'm liking that. So now it's more like a pastel pink which I, I like better. And so I'm just going to add, even though it's not there, I want to see a little bit of pink maybe coming up in the sky and maybe just a little bit on the sand. So because this is a wash, I, I can, um, I'm just going to put it kind of in a couple areas. So you can see I'm just, I'm not putting it on heavy. I'm just kind of doing swipes of it across the sky. It might come to the trees a little bit. All right, kind of scary, right? But fine. maybe I want a little bit more pink down through here. And maybe it might reflect just a little bit in the water too, right? You can have pink in your water. Nobody's, there's no rules. And I'm pretty sure this class is going to take an uh, hour and a half, which is fine. No big deal. Okay, so once I have that pink in there, now all I do is take the water, and I'm just going to go and kind of blend it out like so. And you don't have to do, do this. If you like the way your painting looks and you're feeling overwhelmed, you don't have to do this. This is just my way of kind of adding um, some fun to it and making it look a little bit brighter. Okay, so now you can see I have some pink in my sky, which I like. And I might add just a little bit to the sand and then I'm gonna be done. So maybe a little bit down here. Maybe some areas where I want to 
kind of lighten it and brighten it up. I'm going to add it more down to this area, kind of by the water. And just add a little bit of water. And I'll probably um, also use, what's the word, my paper towel, because it's kind of looking like Pepto-Bismol. There we go. That gave it just a little more depth. Oh, and what happened there? I just picked up some blue from my water, which wasn't supposed to happen. Like uh, Bob Ross says, happy little accident. So I'm going to just wipe that up right before we're done. Good thing about acrylic paint, so you can see that blue that I carried over. I'm able to wipe it up. You just have to be careful to make sure that the other paint's dry. Or you'll take that up as well. That's okay. Okay, I fixed it. All right, so um, that is it. I'm going to um, wrap it up for the day. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, happy painting and um, have a great day. That's it.